Hello and welcome to the I, your English News Bulletin. I'm your anchor Akivito and these are the headlines. Taliban have extended amnesty to ousted Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Afghan former Vice President Amrullah Saleh, senior Taliban leader Khalil Ul Rahman Haqqani said. The Enforcement Directorate on Monday filed a charge sheet against former Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh's aide Kundan Shinde and Sanjeev Palande in an alleged money laundering case. The meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the delegation of 10 parties led by Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar to discuss a caste-based census is underway in Delhi. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal inaugurated India's first smoke tower at Connaught Place here on Monday. And now, the news in details. Taliban have extended amnesty to ousted Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Afghan former Vice President Amrullah Saleh, senior Taliban leader Khalil Ur Rahman Haqqani said. Speaking to Geo News on Sunday, Haqqani, a Haqqani network leader who has been put in charge of Kabul security, said the Taliban forgives Ashraf Ghani, Amrullah Saleh and Afghan presidential security advisor Hamdullah Mohib. It forgives everyone, starting from a general who fought against the Taliban to the common person, Haqqani said. Haqqani added, the group forgave everyone from the general to the common man and they can return to the country, Sputnik reported. The enmity between the Taliban and the three officials was only on the basis of religion and driven by the ambition to change the system, he said, noting that the system has now been changed. Ashraf Ghani fled the country after Taliban terrorists entered Kabul. He is currently in the UAE. His vice president, Amrullah Saleh, has anointed himself as the legitimate caretaker president of Afghanistan and is reportedly in the Panjshir province. On August 15th, the Taliban entered the presidential palace in the Afghan capital on Sunday and declared its victory over the government after months of violence in Afghanistan. Days after taking control of the country, the Taliban announced a general amnesty for all Afghan government officials and urged them to return to work, including women corresponding with Sharia law. The Enforcement Directorate on Monday filed a charge sheet against former Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh's Aid Kundan Shinde and Sanjeev Palande in an alleged money laundering case. The case revolves around a transfer of posting racket and collection from bar owners. Shinde and Palande were earlier sent by the court to ED custody. The ED had earlier informed the court that various bar owners were called by the agency for a statement and they had categorically said that they paid rupees 40 lakh to Sachin Waze as good luck money in December 2020 when Waze was crime investigation unit had. The ED had told the court that bar owners paid Rs 1.64 crore and Rs 2.66 crore to Mumbai Police Zone 1-7 to and Zone 8-12. to Sachin Waze told bar owners that money will go to so and so and Sachin Waze has also accepted that he has collected Rupees 4.77 crore between December 2020 and February 2021 and handed over the money to Kundan Shinde, ED's lawyer had told the court. Two police officers' statements were recorded and they said that Palande was also given money, the lawyer said. Sachin Moaze also verified the statement of police officers about Palande, ED's lawyer told the court. The case against the former Home Minister was registered on May 11. The meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the delegation of 10 parties led by Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar to discuss a caste-based census is underway in Delhi. 
PR Chief Minister, other members of the delegation include RJD's Tejasvi Prasad Yadav, JDU leader Vijay Kumar Chaudhary, who is also the Minister for Education and Parliamentary Affairs, former Chief Minister and President of Hindustani Awam Morcha, Jitan Ram Manji, Congress Legislator Party leader Ajit Sharma, and BJP leader and Bihar Minister Janak Ram, CPI ML Legislator Party leader Mahbub Alam, Akhtarul Imam of AIMIM, Mukesh Sani of VIP, Surya Kant Paswan of CPI, and Ajay Kumar of CPIM. Nitish Kumar's Janta Dal United, which is an ally of Bharatiya Janta Party in Bihar, is in favor of a caste based census. He has been advocating for a caste based census in the country and had thus sought an appointment with the Prime Minister. Leader of Opposition in Bihar Legislative Assembly, Tejasvi Yadav, also wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi regarding the demand for a caste based census. Nitish Kumar had said a resolution regarding the caste based census was passed unanimously in the Bihar Legislative Assembly as well as the Legislative Council in 2019. A resolution was passed unanimously once again in 2020 in the State Legislative Assembly. The demand of the caste census is not just the demand from Bihar, but other states also, the Bihar Chief Minister had earlier said. The opposition parties in Bihar also wanted to meet the Prime Minister and had written a letter to the Prime Minister regarding this, the Bihar Chief Minister had said. Kumar meanwhile stated that if the centre does not agree, then Bihar will proceed to conduct a caste-based census. However, the central government has so far refused to accede to the demand. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal inaugurated India's first mock tower at Connaught Place here on Monday. Speaking in the program, Kejriwal said that to fight pollution, the authorities have installed India's first mock tower in Delhi today. This technology has been imported from America and this is a 24 meter tall tower and will clean the air of one kilometer range will put the air from above and release it downward and will release 1,000 square meters per second, he said. It has been installed as an experimental basis and the data will be analyzed by IIT Delhi and IIT Bombay for about two years and share the results and on that basis, we will install more towers around the capital, Kerjewal said. The chief minister also said that the tower is constructed by the Delhi government with the support of Tata Consultancy and National Buildings Construction Corporation Limited under the observation of IIT Delhi and IIT Mumbai. He also pointed that the pollution levels have reduced since 2014 due to the efforts of his government. The level of fine particulate matter PM 2.5 and PM10 has come down significantly, he said. In 2014, the PM2.5 was around 150 and declined to 100 and PM10 was around 300 and now has turned down to 150, he said. Several steps have been taken in collaboration with the people of Delhi, he added. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has instructed the Ministry of External Affairs to brief the floor leaders of political parties in view of recent developments in Afghanistan External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar said. In view of developments in Afghanistan, PM Narendra Modi has instructed that the MEA brief floor leaders of political parties, J. Shankar tweeted. The Minister of Parliamentary Affairs, Joshi Pralhat, will be intimating further details, J. Shankar stated. This comes at a time when the Indian government is evacuating its citizens from the war ravaged country in wake of the fall of Kabul to the Taliban. On August 17, Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Security and instructed all concerned officials to undertake all necessary measures to ensure the safe evacuation of Indian nationals from Afghanistan in the coming days. Meanwhile, the MEA has said the government is committed to the safe return of all Indian nationals from Afghanistan. The MEA said that the main challenge for travel to and from Afghanistan is the operational status of the Kabul airport. The Drugs Controller General of India on Friday approved Zydus Kadela's DNA vaccine 
for emergency use in adults and children aged 12 years and above. Considered a timely move amid warnings of an upcoming third wave in the country. Recently, a committee of experts under the National Institute of Disaster Management warned of the third COVID-19 wave that could peak around October and sought better preparedness for children. Dr. Rene Swarup, Secretary Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, while speaking exclusively to ANI on vaccines for children in India and use of Zydus Cadillas Zykov D for above 12 year adolescents, said that so far the vaccines which were in the market were those which were for above 18 years. This is the DNA vaccine that has just received emergency use authorization and is for 12 to 18 years and above, Swarup said. For the younger children, maybe 5 to 12 years, and even below there are different stages of the research which is still going on and mostly all the vaccine manufacturers on different platforms are doing their trials, Dr. Swarup said. Dr. Swarup added that she knows that Bharat Biotech has already got permission for the trial of a vaccine which is again for younger children 5 years and above. Similarly, the biological E is still in the phase 3 trials, Swarup said. Currently, it's now doing its phase 2, phase 3 for which it got approval for the trials on children, Swarup said. When asked about the administration of Zykov D to children, she said that they have just been informed that this was going to take about 4 weeks before they can bring out the doses for the immunization program which children will get immunized. Knowing this, this is a new technology, a new platform, it does take time for the scale up of the vaccine, Swarup said. The schedule of the dosing for which category of children will be guided by the NTAGI, the working group based on a number of parameters that they will consider and that's how the decision will be taken, she added. Manipur Deputy Chief Minister Y. Joy Kumar Singh has assured the State Assembly on August 23 that the government will try to curb the prices of petroleum products further if situation permits. Replying to a calling attention motion raised by A.K. Mirabai Devi, MLA, on the reported loss of revenue of the state due to higher VAT in comparison to that of neighboring states, the Deputy Chief Minister, also in charge of finance, said that the news report published in the local dailies stating that Rs 49.34 crore had been lost in the financial year 2019-20 to is totally baseless. Joy Kumar Singh said that in view of the current pandemic situation, the state government had been considering ways to minimize the prices of petroleum products. Admitting that some neighboring states have lower VAT in petroleum products, he said states like Assam, Meghalaya and Nagaland have greater revenue deficit grants than Manipur, and therefore these states can have lesser VAT in petroleum products. Moreover, these states have adequate revenue resources other than petroleum products for revenue generation. But in Manipur state, VAT has been an important source of revenue generation. Although the state has been facing a tight financial situation, steps will be taken to rejuvenate financial resources, it was informed. Earlier, AK Mirabai drew the attention of the House regarding the soaring prices of petrol and diesel, which was reportedly affecting mainly the state farmers of the state. She urged the government to reduce the current prices of petrol and diesel as in case of other states in the northeast region. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Monday launched the National Monetization Pipeline that includes the centre's four-year plan to monetize its brownfield infrastructure assets. The government has planned a rupees 6 lakh crore pipeline of assets that can be monetized which includes a range of assets put on a block for private sector participation over a four-year period from financial year 2022 to financial year 2025. The Union Minister of Finance, while launching the pipeline, said that the National Monetization Pipeline talks about the brownfield assets where investment is already been made, where there are assets either languishing or not fully monetized or underutilized. Asset monetization based on the philosophy of creation through monetization is aimed at tapping private sector investment for new infrastructure creation, she said. This is necessary for creating employment opportunities, thereby enabling high economic growth and 
seamlessly integrating the rural and semi-urban areas for overall public welfare, she added. The finance minister enumerated the reforms and initiatives undertaken by the current government towards accelerated infrastructure development and for incentivizing private sector investments, including scheme of financial assistance to states for capital expenditure, which incentives state governments to recycle state government-owned assets for fast-tracking greenfield infrastructure. She said at this point the list of assets that are coming are all the central government's assets and not talking about states. The 24 hours bandh in all the hill districts of Manipur called by the All Tribal Students Union of Manipur is going on peacefully with no report of any untoward incident till the filing of this report. However, the bandh has disrupted vehicular movement and closed all business establishments during the day. Media persons at Sinapati, as our Andrea General Secretary of the Outsum Tanked Tribal Leaders, student leaders, women leaders, and the tribal populace for extending support to the band called by the Outsum to express resentment over the state government's refusal to table the Manipur Hill Areas ADC Bill 2021 in the ongoing State Assembly session. The Office of the Tribal Students placed on record clarifications that the recommendations made by the Hill Area committee is not to divide the state but a bill to take up equal development between the hills and the value of the state. The HAC recommended the bill under Article 371C of the Indian Constitution of 1972, stating that the Hill Area Committee can recommend any legislation or any executive action relating to the schedule matters. With that aim, the HAC had reportedly recommended a bill to be tabled in the Assembly regarding EDC in the hills. According to the 1972 order, the recommended bill should be normally given effect to it by the state government or otherwise the bill can be referred to the governor by the state government if the bill is considered incomplete. However, it is unfortunate for the state government keeping the bill in the cold storage, he stated. The Manipur Legislative Assembly of the state is to look into the bill to turn to act which is worthy for the welfare of the public, it was asserted. The tribal organizations are reportedly not happy when the bill was not tabled in the assembly which they term unconstitutional. To sustain the movement, the outcome is reportedly convening a tribal consultative meeting about a bill in the Adimjati Amiti Hall, Chingmerong, Imphal on August 24. The meeting will reportedly discuss issues relating to the bill and as part of strengthening the movement. More than 200 goods laden trucks are reportedly stranded at Maugate due to the ban. In the ongoing 13th session of the 11th Manipur Legislative Assembly on August 23, Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh informed that the House that a total of 1,739 COVID-19 positive patients and 38 post-COVID-19 related deaths have been reported till the 20th of this month. And to a question raised by Surja Kumar Okram, MLA, the Chief Minister, also in charge of health, said that the related debt records are from government and private health facilities in the state. He said only 38 post-COVID-19 related deaths were reported through district administrators and police superintendents. The Chief Minister also said that eligible technicians to operate the installed oxygen plants in the state will be recruited soon. Chief Minister informed the House that the Centre has sanctioned COVID relief fund for the year 2020 to 21 and 21 to 22. Replying to a question raised by Surja Kumar Okram, MLA, the Chief Minister said that under the central government's COVID-19 emergency response and health system preparedness package, a total amount of rupees 31 crore 52 lakh has been sanctioned. He said that under the state disaster response fund, rupees 16 crore 80 lakh has been allocated during financial year 2020 to 21 and rupees 8 lakh and rupees 8 crore 40 lakh has been sanctioned during financial year 2021 to 22. A total of rupees 3 crore was released by the North Eastern Council in 2021 for COVID-related expenses and the entire amount has been spent. 
During 2020-21, a sum of rupees 4.111 crore was allocated from PM Cares. No fund is allocated from PM Cares during financial year 2021-22. Further, he informed the House that a total of Rs. 7.5 crore have been released from the SDRF for giving remuneration to the COVID task force. And that was all for the AI. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Hornbill TV.